Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this second Sunday after Epiphany. It is so wonderful to have you joining us this morning. If you are new, a special welcome to you, to this place that we know is a place of love and acceptance for who you are and where you are in your life's journey. So thank you for joining with us. Before we begin this morning, um, also an important thing to note, this is a three-day weekend, of course, on Monday, we remember the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and so today's service has some emphases on that. Uh, his words, especially even today, are quite prophetic and we're so um, humbled to have had him uh, a part of this nation's history. And uh, he is certainly worth, and his words are worth remembering. Um, before we get into our service, however, I have a few announcements to make uh, pertaining to life in the church. The verse is on February 7th, which is, of course, rapidly coming up. We have our annual meeting for budget and finance. The council has been working hard to put together a budget for this year. And so um, it's an important day for us to be able to, to approve that so that we can go forward with our plan for the rest of the year. Um, so that information for Zoom and for calling in will come out soon to try to reach as many people as possible. Unfortunately, this continues to be the way that we're, we're best able to have these large meetings, so we're thankful for your participation. On the 24th and the 31st, um, leading up to that, this is in January, the weeks leading up to our annual meeting, the council is also gonna create space to talk with you. Um, it'll be an opportunity uh, for you to ask questions about the budget, but also for you to just ask questions about the church, and of course, about what's the council up to, and for you to express any thoughts or whatnot that might be coming up in your heart. So uh, again, please look for that announcement coming up very shortly about what time and, and the Zoom information for that. It will be coming out to you. This, of course, dear friends, is also the start of the year, which means first, we're so very thankful to you for all that you did for the church this past year. Uh, your generosity, as always, was um, so amazing, and, and the fact that so many of you stepped forward to, to participate uh, financially in the life of the church really supported the ministry and what we're trying to do. With that being said, it's also the start of the year, and it's also a wonderful time to make a pledge to the church. Uh, these are certainly uncertain times, and often it is difficult to say, well, how much can I give when there is so much unknown about the year ahead? And I, I, we all understand that, and we all appreciate that very much. Uh, but as I also say, nobody says that, you know, you can't give the minimum or pledge the minimum amount that you think you can give and then go above that. Nobody will ever stop you from doing that. Uh, but pledging really helps a church uh, plan for the, for the year ahead. Obviously, it's most helpful um, when we know that we have, you know, close to 100% participation in our pledging. Of course, we haven't, uh, you know, been able to make... Uh, to that, that percentage, but so often our, our uh, budgets are often projections of what we anticipate the year to be based upon previous year trends. That of course is ripe with uncertainty uh, because we don't know necessarily how, how things will end come December. So I hope that you uh, please consider making a pledge for this year. It does really help the church out in its planning and, and its security. So thank you for that, for that consideration. Also, dear friends, last week I announced this uh, phone call uh, kind of list that, that we're trying to put together, um, telephone chain, or maybe is a better way to put it. I'm, I'm, I don't really have a name for it, but uh, I've heard back from some that are, are wishing to participate in making calls to other members, so thank you for that. I've only heard back from one who would like to receive uh, phone calls um, with regularity. Uh, but again, if you're interested in being part of this, either receiving phone calls or making con phone calls or both, uh, please do let me know. It's just helpful. I'm going to announce this one more time next week uh, before I, I start to organize and put this together. So I appreciate that. And, and let me be clear, I'm not going to stop making phone calls too. That's, that's just part of us trying to be a community in this endeavor and, and realizing that we've been apart too long. Um, and we want to, to be more connected. Lastly, dear friends, this, um, I wanna share before we jump into our service, something that was put, to the, uh, put together by the Synod Race and Equity team 
Um, and what it is, it's the Nicene Creed, which we know very well, but it was augmented with sentences from Martin Luther King Jr. And I found it touching, and I found it to be a, a great way to frame ourselves as we enter into service. So I invite you to sit back. We'll have the prelude in just a moment, but to sit back and listen and meditate on these words. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe also in a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, with one being in the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe also in a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in a holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We believe also that with this faith we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful kinship, symphony of kinship. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. When we let freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black, and white, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Please enjoy this prelude.
my friends would begin with the call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another in this moment of silence together. You please join in the public confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. And your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, we begin with a hymn, Arise, Your Light Has Come, hymn number 314, or as you will see, coming up for you here on the screen. be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day as it comes up for you here on the screen. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. If you could please read responsively. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. 
you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Here ends our psalm. Thanks be to God. Today we're happy to welcome uh, Chaplain Mike Dixon, who today will uh, offer a word to us. He'll read the gospel and then he'll offer his homily. So thanks, Chaplain Mike. The Gospel of our Lord, from John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered him, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May your words touch our hearts and move us to follow in your footsteps, O Lord. Amen. First, thank you, Pastor Derek, for getting us off to an inspirational start this morning. Next, I want to give thanks for having the opportunity to share my thoughts on this gospel lesson on this MLK holiday weekend. Our gospel reading finds Jesus telling Philip, follow me. Philip excitedly tells his friend Nathaniel that he has found the one that the scriptures have spoken of. In 2021, we are no different. When we find a good deal at a restaurant or on a car purchase or on a computer, we can't wait to share what we have found with those we care about in our lives. Nathaniel's response is as if Philip had just told him that he found a great deal at Big Lots. Nathaniel inquires of Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Like our friends and family of today, Nathaniel simply had to go and see for himself. Nathaniel was taken back when Jesus tells those around him, Nathaniel is a man of honesty and integrity. Where did you get to come to know me? Nathaniel asked of Jesus. When Jesus tells Nathaniel where he was before Philip called him, he tells Jesus that you are the Son of God and you are the King of Israel. Jesus tells Nathaniel that he will see heaven open up and angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus tells his disciples 
follow me, and you will see wondrous things. 2,000 years later, Jesus offers the same to us. We too are invited to follow Jesus and walk with him. Like Philip, we should be excited to tell our family and friends about Jesus as we have come to love and know him. Through this online ministry, through our fellowship hour, through our Christian education offerings, through our soon to be updated website, we are striving to help others get to know and love our Lord. I wanna go back to today's prayer of the day that we jointly offered up just a few minutes ago. Together we ask God, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you. Just think of how our day would go if we began each day with that thought in our hearts and our minds. It would be very difficult for others not to see Christ in our lives. We live in a world of people who want to be appreciated, accepted, and loved for who they are and just as they are. Our church is taking steps to become a recognized reconciliation in Christ's church. This journey will help the worlds around us see that we are able and willing to appreciate and accept people just as they are. The second page of today's Sunday Bulletin shows a picture of the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial in downtown DC. The bottom inscription reads, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. The times we currently live in are also full of despair. Political despair, social despair, and despair from our current pandemic. Dr. King raised awareness of a people who simply wanted to be seen and heard. The problems and concerns in their lives needed to be shared with the world. He helped others see and listen to the problems of the oppressed people of his day. Following the teachings of Jesus, he promoted caring and compassion as the best means to get others to see the needs of those around him. Over 50 years later, by following the teachings of Jesus, we still promote the use of caring and compassion to help others see the suffering of those around us. We are all on our own path. It is a personal path. It is a private path. But it is a path that we are not on alone. Jesus told Philip, follow me. Philip invited Nathaniel. Who will you invite? Whether behind a keyboard or in person, our caring and compassionate words and actions show others that they are not alone and invites them to join us on our path to help others see that they are appreciated and accepted for who they are. Let us continue to have open eyes, open ears, and open hearts as we help others see Christ through us. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn 841, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Please join in from wherever you are and let the words and music fill your soul.
Thank you for singing that with us. With the whole church throughout the ages, let us confess our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, in the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr., we pray for a better world, and we pray for the strength and courage to do our part in ensuring it is a better place for our children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in hope that a country and world begin to heal and mend from the terrible struggle of COVID-19. We pray for all the people in this world whose lives have been affected by illness, by the loss of loved ones, and disruptions to their lives so that they can begin to heal with the full support of all their neighbors who love them and reverently hold their pain and hold them in love along with you, holy God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in hope that as people we can take account of our words and be mindful that what we say matters. We pray that our words build others up, that it deepen our relationships, that it tear down walls that cause rifts between us, and that it connects us together as we work proactively and lovingly to be a body in Christ and work towards a peaceful and loving world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray and hope that we will be inspired to use this year ahead of us as a year of action so that as we emerge back into the world, we can continue to boldly welcome others into the life of the church so we can regather together to strengthen our bonds and that we can continue to advocate for God's justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear God, we pray for this community and all our families and friends. We especially pray for those who are in hospice, including George Sung, as well as those that continue to recover from surgeries named and unnamed, including Marla Davis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also recognize, dear God, that there are many people in our hearts who are in need of a special prayer. Now, together in this moment of silence, we lift their names up to you. We follow your ways, dear Lord. We follow your teachings for a better nation and world. We know what is possible through you. So we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered together as one body, we pray as our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, my dear friends, before we depart, just a reminder that we always have a fellowship hour following service here on Zoom. That information comes out each week in the listserv. I hope that you can join us for that. It's just so wonderful to see everybody's faces and just be able to have a laugh and a conversation over some coffee. So please consider joining us for that. And until we see each other again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you each with blessings. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and forever give you his peace. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Take care.